Hey guys everyone and welcome back to a new video on the channel. So in today's video, we're taking a closer look at how we can use the SEMrush tool in order to understand how our competitors are doing from an SEO standpoint. So if you ever wondered what keywords are my competitors targeting and what keywords are they prioritizing and how is their SEO efforts? Well, this is gonna be a complete guide for you in order to understand how to use the SEMrush tool, what insights you can get, where you can learn from the insights and how you can use all of that insights and all of that data to your own website and to your own clients perhaps and maximize your SEO efforts as well. With that being said, it's gonna be a very beginner friendly tutorial. So if you're new to SEMrush or if you've been using SEMrush for just a couple of weeks or maybe a couple of days, this will be the perfect video for you. So just make sure you watch the whole video throughout to understand everything you need to know. And if you do enjoy content like this one, make sure you do leave a like down below. But with that being said, let's just jump into this tutorial and hopefully you guys do enjoy. Okay, so starting off, the very first thing you want to do is just make sure you go on the SEMrush tool. And now once you are in the SEMrush tool, just go to the organic research tab. Once we are over here, the first thing we want to do is either select a competitor or your own domain or your client's domain. Whatever it is, you wanna make sure you grab a domain. Uh, in this example, what I'll be doing is just jumping over to New York Palmer is what I searched for. And then what we'll be doing is taking a look at the top ranking uh, sites right here. But what we want to do is actually find a, a New York Palmer or a plumber within New York that is ranking fairly poorly. So what we can do is just go to, let's say the page, page number four. Once we're on page number four, we can see that there are a couple of websites right here. I mean, a lot of them are gonna be uh, just websites which are ranking uh, different plumbing services, but some of them are actually gonna be legit companies. So in this example, let's grab this one right here. I think this one looks fa fairly legit. So let's see here, we do have providing, okay, I already, I don't like this one, uh, but that's fine. Providing you with the best products and the best prices to get the job done right. Uh, their website definitely needs some improvement. I don't like the stock photo right here. But I mean, in the US, you tend to have weird website designs. I'm not sure why it's a US thing, but it's something that I've seen uh, across the US quite, quite a lot. Anyway, what we want to do, let's say this is our client or this is our company ourselves. What we want to do is just grab the domain, go back over to SEMrush and then just post it directly in here. Then you wanna select the market you wanna do the research in. And in this example, it's gonna be the US, but maybe you're from Finland or Denmark or France or Germany, whatever it is, just make sure you select the right uh, one right here. Once that is done, we can just go ahead and click on search. Essentially what that just did is pull all the organic data that we have for this specific domain. Take into account, this is not gonna be 100% accurate. It's never gonna be as accurate as the first party data that you get for, for Search Console, for example. Uh, but it will be fairly similar to what you'll see in Search Console. Anyway, the first thing we see here is that we have the keywords that we are currently ranking for and the change as well. So we can see the, the website is actually ranking for less keywords recently. The traffic is also down by a little bit, but the traffic, this will be the average traffic that you're getting on a monthly basis. And then the traffic cost, so an estimated cost in terms of all the traffic that you're getting towards the site, how much would that traffic cost from a paid perspective? So if you only paid for this traffic, this is how much that would generally cost you based on the type of keywords that the website is ranking for. And then branded traffic, we can see that we have six, 674 of the total. And then we have non-branded traffic, which is 528. Branded traffic will be all the keywords which are directly related to the brand name. So let's say if we are Nike, for example, our brand traffic will be very, very high because a lot of people will just be Googling for Nike and then they will go on the Nike website. But if you are a less familiar brand or less well-known, a lot of your traffic will come most likely from non-branded traffic. And that also depends if you're doing well from an SEO perspective as well. Anyway, moving on, we can see that our, we have our traffic trend right here uh, throughout the year from 2020 until October, 2021. And we can also see the top organic keywords for the website. So currently New York Plumbing Supply, which is I think the name of the brand, I'm not sure. Yes, New York Plumbing Supply is essentially the name of the brand. And I just realized that this company actually sells materials, so it's not really directed towards clients. So it might not be 100% related, but 
take, in, take this into account. Let's pretend this is actually a plumber and they're not actually selling plumbing supplies. So let's just pretend they're a plumber. Anyway, plumbing wholesale, plumbing supply in New York and so on and so forth. So these are their top uh, organic keywords, their position and the volume for these keywords as well. Because plumbing wholesale, obviously the ranking number eight, which is great. This is a very broad keyword though. So if they have people searching from, let's say, let's say Washington, for example, they might not be selling their supplies to Washington. So that might be a bit of a tricky situation to be in because even though they're ranking for a very broad keyword, they might not even be able to uh, fulfill the intent that the user is trying to, to, to essentially fulfill on their site. So if you're trying to order plumbing supplies and you're ranking for plumbing wholesale, and someone cannot order your plumbing supplies because they're in a different city, then that obviously might not be the best keyword to rank for. Anyway, moving on, we have top position changes. So this is going to be a new keywords or keywords you have lost or improved or declined. So you can just go through these if you want as well. Uh, but this is just going to be the general for your website overall. Now, if you want to take a look at our competitors, we're going to head over to the competitors tab right here. So if we do click on competitors, we can see that we have our competitive positioning map. So this will essentially tell you how well our website is doing in comparison to websites that are similar to ours and are ranking to similar keywords that we are. So you can see that plumbing supply over here, we do have a lot of ranking keywords, although our traffic is not as high. So we have a lot of keywords we're ranking for, traffic is low, but we can see that soloco.com right here has a lot of traffic, but they're ranking for less keywords. And this is actually our, our domain. I'm sorry, this is something else. And then our domain right here, we, are, we have quite a lot of traffic and we are ranking for, I mean, it's, it's a fair amount of keywords. We're doing pretty, pretty well in terms of our keywords overall. And what this can mean is that this company right here might be ranking for a lot of either irrelevant keywords or less competitive keywords, which means most likely they will have less traffic as well because the less competitive keywords will often have less traffic as well or less search volume. Anyway, jumping down, we can see competitive level. So we can see some of the more relevant companies or more related companies to our website overall. So we have Jackson Supply right here. So if you jump over to Jackson Supply, we can see how Jackson Supply is doing, what the company is about and what they're doing. First of all, they don't have HTTPS, which obviously you want to install. If they would install HTTPS, obviously that would have a bit of an impact on their organic performance overall. So that's something to think about there. By the way, this website, just as the other one, doesn't look that great. It's a very uh, US thing, as I said. Uh, but anyway, this is also New York, so that's obviously one of the competitors. So here would be a great opportunity if you want to find the direct competitors. If you had no idea who your direct competitors were, maybe you have some of a, somewhat of an idea who your competitors are, but it's always the best to base it on data, not just what you think. So obviously jumping in here will give you a better idea on who your actual competitors are. Uh, for your organic performance. Then what we can do is jump over to Keyword Gap. So Keyword Gap will essentially just tell you what keywords your competitors are ranking for and what keywords you are ranking for and your competitors are not ranking for. And this will be a great way for you to understand, okay, are all, my, all of my competitors are ranking for, let's say, uh, plumbing supply in New York 24 seven or whatever the keyword is, right? But we are not ranking for that keyword. Then that would be an opportunity for us to also rank for that keyword because we want to make sure that we are ranking for the same keywords or at least the keywords which are relevant to our business but our competitors are using them as well. Now, if Jackson Supply over here is ranking for Jackson Supply, even though that might have a lot of search volume, it's not really relevant for us to try to rank for a branded keyword at the Jackson Supply owns because it's not gonna be relevant to us. People searching for Jackson Supply obviously wanna go to the Jackson Supply website. But what we want to do here is just select a couple of our competitors. So this will just pull it straight from, uh, from the list that we had earlier. So we'll just pop these in right here. And then we wanna make sure we go to organic keywords right here. If you wanna look at paid, you can look at paid as well, or we're gonna look at organic. Then again, make sure you're in the right market. The US market is what we want to look at. And once that is filled out, just go ahead and click on compare. Once you've clicked on compare, you'll have this keyword overlap. So essentially tell you how much you're overlapping your keywords with your, with your competitors. The blue circle right here will be our domain or our example domain. We're ranking for 167 keywords. Jackson Supply 70, Webmaster Plumbing 79, 
AMP Supply 56 and Solo, Co uh, Solo Company at 232 right here. So you can see the Solo Company is obviously doing the best in terms of the, the amount of keywords they're ranking for. But as we saw earlier, their traffic is not as high as ours. And so that is a, obviously means that we are ranking for keywords. Either we are ranking more highly for those keywords or the keywords we are ranking for have higher search volume. Now, if you do go down right here, we'll have all the keywords that we have shared with our competitors. So the keywords that we currently rank for, but our competitors also rank for as well. Then if we go over to missing, we can see that we don't have any missing keywords right here, which is good. This is gonna be the keywords which our domain is not ranking for, but some of our competitors are ranking for. Now, if you go to weak right here, we don't have any weak either. We have strong. So we have keywords that we are ranking better for than our competitors. So we can see that we are currently at position one for these and then we're in position three for York Plumbing Supply and Area Plumbing Supply, Queens, New York, we're at position 10, or Jackson Supply is 20, and then Webmaster 59 and so on. And then you can see the search volume for these keywords as well. Now we wanna make sure we go over to the untapped area right here because the untapped area is gonna essentially gonna be the keywords which we are not ranking for and our competitors might be ranking for, but not all of them. So the untapped, you can see plumbing supply right here. We are currently not ranking for plumbing supply at all. This currently has 110,000 monthly searches Although plumbing supply, as I said, is a very broad term. It's gonna cover the, all of the US, even, even the Canada and other English speaking countries as well. So it's a very, very broad keyword. So usually if you are a local business, you wanna target the more local keywords. So local keywords will include your local area, plumbing supply, New York, plumbing supply, uh, York, uh, New York, or whatever it is, right? So that, that's our, essentially gonna be the priority keywords for your brand. Now, the difference is if you are an e-commerce brand or if you are a brand that actually sells your services or your product to a global or maybe a national uh, audience, then obviously it's gonna be a bit different because all of the keywords are essentially gonna be relevant to your brand. So what we can do to narrow down this list, instead of going through one by one and searching through these keywords, what we can actually do is just go up here into our filters and then we can filter by keyword. So perhaps we want to include New York in here just to see, to see all the keywords actually include New York. So if we go down here, we can see that we only have four untapped ones, which is definitely not a lot. So we do have Heating and Burner Bronx, New York, this one currently has 90 in search volume and heating and burner, I think it could be a probably expensive product. So it could be worth targeting keywords like this, which are a bit more specific, has less search volume. But obviously if you are a brand which sells those specific products and they're relevant to you, why wouldn't you want to rank for those keywords? You can see the webmaster right here is currently actually targeting this keyword. And we also have AMP, which is targeting this keyword. So we do have some of the competitors targeting these keywords, but we are not targeting them. We also have kitchen and bath gallery, Brooklyn, New York, right here with also 90 in search volume, which is not bad. New York, New York sewer repair, which is 40. This might not be relevant because it's, again, it's gonna be a, a wholesale supplier. It's not actually gonna do the repairs, I think, I'm not sure. And then AMPM New York, obviously that's gonna be their branded keywords. It's not gonna be relevant to us. Now jumping into unique right here, we can see all the keywords that our website is ranking for, but our competitors are not ranking for. So from this standpoint, we can understand, okay, what are we doing better than they are? And perhaps can we improve some of these keywords as well? Obviously we can see that we are ranking on position 41 right here, which is obviously not the best and this is Palmer New York but in the end of the day this is not going to be relevant for the brand so that's a reason why they're not ranking very well either uh, but obviously this would be a great way for you to kind of understand what you are doing well um, in, in comparison to your competitors now let's go back and remove the New York filter right here and go back into all keywords overall and then what we can do is go into positioning as well so for all domains or the competitors, we can say that we only want to see the keywords you're ranking for in the top 10. And then we can say, okay, Solo Company is ranking very well for Brooklyn Plumbing Supply. This is definitely gonna be relevant for this business. Let's see, this is our domain. So this is something that we could potentially target. We could add 
let's say a landing page, which is tar uh, targeting specifically Brooklyn plumbing supply. And then we can expand that out into other areas of New York as well. So all the local areas which people are searching for, uh, plumbing supply in Manhattan is probably something that uh, a lot of people are searching for as well. So obviously expanding that out into all the different local areas and making sure that we have targeted content meeting that search demand as well. What we can actually do is click right here just to get an overview in terms of the websites which are currently ranking for this keyword and see what what is the content like on these keywords? Like what content or what type of content should we create in order to rank for these keywords? So we can see the Brooklyn Plumbing Supply might actually be a company right here. So let's have a look. And yes, it is a company. So this is definitely not a keyword that we should target. Although I think New York or Brooklyn Plumbing Supply might be a bit of a general keyword as well. So it might be worth targeting. But overall, the keyword seems to be owned by the company in general. You have their Yelp site right here, their Facebook page and something else. This seems to be a fairly hard keyword to actually rank for overall. So this might not be the best keyword for us to rank for, but we can continue looking down. This is what SEO is all about, making sure that you find those opportunities. We also have Web, Webster something company right here, which are ranking for Webster Plumbing. That is obviously going to be branded. Solco is going to be branded. Josco Plumbing. All of these seems to be branded. Let's see if we can find something that is a bit more general. Webster, Webster, Webster. There's a lot of keywords here which are actually just branded. Seems like a lot of these keywords are just going to be branded. And that is because I selected a top position. So obviously what we can see here is that these companies are not doing very well in terms of their organic performance because most of the keywords they're ranking for very well are gonna be branded keywords. But what we can do is have a look again and see a top 20. Now for top 20, we can see that we have some additional keywords. It's still not a lot, so it depends what type of competitors you pick here. But let's go down and see if we have something that is more relevant here. Green Mountain Boiler, I think this is a type of product which is called uh, green mountain boiler obviously so that could potentially be something that we want to target if we are offering this product you can see the green mountain boilers are obviously ranking number one but if we are also supplying this product this could potentially be a page or another type of uh, content that we can create around this specific keyword and then we can just continue doing this for all the types of keywords that we want to look at. We can switch out these domains one by one, have a look at other competitors, and then we can jump into each individual competitor as well. So if we want to, we can also jump back over to organic research. Then we can just use this domain instead and go to the domain overview. And then we can get a bit of a more detailed look at this specific competitor. Let's go to the US and see how well they are doing in terms of their organic research. Obviously here, it doesn't look like they have any kind of SEO efforts. It seemed to kind of just be going up and down. It doesn't really have any specific trend. It has been going up over the last couple of years, but it doesn't seem to be targeting that much on SEO. Anyway, this will be how you do your general competitive research. Obviously, you can dive in a lot deeper. You can look at different competitors. You can look at different keywords. And it will all be a bit or slightly different depending on what type of business you have. Is it a local business? Are you doing national, global? So these are all things you have to take into consideration. But at least by following these steps, you'll have some sort of a basis to go off of. And once you find those really relevant keywords, which have a decent search volume and are not that competitive and still is relevant to your company, those are going to be the keywords that you want to target. But that is going to be it for today's video. Thank you all for watching. If you did enjoy, as always, please make sure to leave a like down below. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And if you want to join our free Discord channel, it's going to be linked in the video description as well. Please do go ahead and join our Discord channel. It's full of people from the channel and a place for everyone to just discuss, hang out, and essentially discuss whatever you want. So if you need feedback on your website, maybe help on an SEO issue you have or marketing, Whatever it is, all of that will be available within the Discord channel down below. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the very next video.